We recently had an opportunity to meet with Dave Wickland, Senior Curator of the National Firearms Museum, which is located at NRA Headquarters in Fairfax, Virginia, which is just outside of Washington, D.C. Doug showed us the Firearms Library, the Conservation Lab, and the extensive Firearms Archive. Thanks to Doug and the NRA for this opportunity to share with everyone this behind-the-scenes look at the NRA Museum. Hope you enjoy our quick tour. Thanks for watching. National Firearms Museum Library, among other things, has a uh, type collection of uh, Springfield 1903 rifles. And these were all donated to us by one individual. He lived in uh, Brooklyn, New York, and actually had all these in a special storage area underneath a couch in his uh, living room. Excellent. <laughs> but you can see it goes from the earliest 1903s all the way up to a uh, you know, post-World War II sporter. And in between you get to see a variety of things, a World War II sniper, some of the target guns. Just an incredible selection of O3s. Now am I right that most of the items in the collection are from private donors? Roughly 99% of what you saw in the gallery someone gave to us. Excellent. We have a few loans, but the vast majority of it is uh, donation. So people, like when they, uh, they can donate their estates or portions of their estates to and the museum? Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Excellent. So we're kind of in a behind the scenes, uh, this is behind the scenes. library where you're, like say, you're getting ready for another location. And mm -hmm. This is actually one of the groups of guns that will be going out to our Springfield, uh, Missouri Museum. And then do the exhibits rotate downstairs as well? We do. We do, as a matter of fact. Uh, the 1911 uh, exhibit that you saw didn't exist uh, until last year with the uh, centennial of the uh, 1911 design. But as you can see, it basically covers a variety of areas uh, from hunting, military, uh, collecting, a little bit of everything represented here. We have a unique kind of Dewey Decimal system. Uh, it uh, sorts gun <laughs> books by the author's last name okay. and uh, also by the title. So if it's a cult book, all the cult books are together, which is kind of neat. And these are, they're not, it's not an open library, but these are available if researchers need to... Actually, this is the only public library that NRA operates. This is open by appointment. Okay. And we have quite a few folks that come through to make use of the research capabilities. Uh, as you saw down in our uh, uh, store, we have a tremendous variety of gun references there, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of neat. Now this is kind of in, see, in uh, a state of uh, <laughs> work too. Yeah. We're getting set. Uh, we have uh, American Rifleman TV show uh, here this week. They're actually filming down on the range uh, doing shooting. There's a brown vest being shot hopefully by the, our other senior curator right about now. Excellent. But we're getting set to pull a whole group of guns for shots uh, tomorrow and also Friday. So that's what a lot of the guns are in racks for. Actually. That's good to hear. So these guns don't just sit, they do get shot once in a while. Uh, they do. As a matter of fact, these ones here behind you, uh, those ones over there, these ones on this rack are all uh, destined for uh, tomorrow. <laughs> so at some point we'll see these on cable. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. That's kind of neat. Yeah, there's a variety of neat things that uh, come into us. You know, XP100s. And then again, many of these guns are uh, donations that have come into us. Folks that uh, wanted to be able to let people enjoy. Uh, same history and so forth. Uh, sometimes the history is kind of special. We generally handle uh, the material with uh, gloves, so I can't kind of pass this one around. But this is Tom Selleck's Henry rifle from Last Stand at Sabre River. Oh, wow. It looks like he's donated quite a bit of stuff to the museum. He has. If you saw in our Hollywood Guns exhibit, there's quite a few pieces that uh, Mr. Selleck's been very, very nice and given to us. So there's incredible guns here. This is a 15-shot Hall revolving rifle that was made in New York City. Uh, unfortunately, the son of the, the inventor, uh, this gun, you know, the only holding point for the front end of it, it's rather heavy, is to put your hand there. On a percussion gun, sometimes you can have chain fire uh, happen, more than one chamber going off at the same time. Your hand, of course, is in the danger zone. Right. <laughs> so that's so good reason for a vertical grip on that one. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So okay. that's just one of the guns that's changed recently in our galleries. So there's good reason for people to, if they're in the area or traveling through, to We have 3,000 guns by. on display. That's just half the collection. But at any given point, folks can wander through and see just incredible things. We had the 175th anniversary Colt uh, come in. That was just last week. Uh, a courier from Colt dropped it off. 
it's on display down in our galleries. Excellent. So manufacturers donate sometimes as well. Actually, this one's alone. <laughs> so <laughs> that one will go back. These are our kind of concept cars for the second museum in Springfield, Missouri that we're working on. As you go through this area, you'll have to stay pretty close to us because there's alarm sensors. What we do in here, anything that isn't on display in the National Firearms Museum galleries upstairs is temporarily housed down here. This is our firearms vault. We also have a non-firearms vault where we keep everything that isn't a gun. Now that one is packed so full we can't really get into that one today. And that would be like holsters and holsters and so equi forth. support equipment and all that. So at any given point, we're working on uh, hundreds of guns in here. You wouldn't normally see all these guns laid out, but we have a substantial number of these guns going on their way to uh, Springfield, Missouri. Some of our folks that you see here are museum volunteers and staff that are working on a project. This will give you a pretty good idea as to what we're working on. Inside of these wooden crates rest the firearms for the uh, Trap Shooting Hall of Fame in Vandalia, Ohio. Recently closed, we have these guns. They're going to go to uh, our Springfield, Missouri Museum. Behind you on these racks are the Packmark uh, collection that uh, was in the West. Again, another uh, fantastic group of guns that we were able to bring in, put into preparation to go to Springfield, Missouri to the NRA National Sporting Arms Museum. With the uh, guns that you saw up in our library, with other guns that we have staged, we're going to be sending hundreds of guns to Springfield, Missouri. Not incredibly apparent, but uh, pump action, semi-automatic, over and under, side by side. You can basically go through and see that level of organization just in the shotguns. We have also a computer database. What you saw on the kiosk upstairs, that also ties into location codes for here. Now, the, uh, I noticed that the Smithsonian doesn't show any guns publicly anymore, as far as I can tell, and all theirs are in the vault, and then they, they offer the... They have about 10,000 guns in their collection. But they I offer mean, sort of like an online tour. Is there anything in the works to show all these on a... Well, we uh, have right now uh, on our website, uh, folks can see thousands of guns already that are on display. We're planning with the uh, NRA National Sporting Arms Museum in Springfield to have all the guns that go out there also uh, represented on the uh, internet. That's Excellent. Website. Resource. So there's no interest in keeping these hidden. These are already out there. Well, the, these quite shortly are going to be out for folks to enjoy. We're preparing them. We're uh, treating them with microcrystal wax, cataloging them, things like that. So that's all part of what uh, what this room is all about. And right now you're seeing it just packed in the gills as we get set to uh, to move guns. <laughs> that's a rifling machine that was used in uh, West Virginia up to about 1910. I got that from a very nice uh, woman that's down here on the little bit of Yeah, I have this rifle machine. Just get tired of being a barrel. There you go. Oh, that's nice. 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 Yeah. The rifle machines are going to go out to Missouri, too, so this is the outdoors. But uh, U.S. military, to give you an idea, of one of the first guns in the museum that's uh, down here right now, we're sorting out where this one's going to go. General Ambrose Burnside, NRA's first president, gave us this carbine. That was one that he had designed, which is kind of neat. This uh, engraved Remington rolling block, that's uh, a gun that was used at the first NRA annual meetings. That was when they were held at the uh, at the range at Creedmoor up on Long Island. But the way that this particular uh, part of the museum vault is set up, chronological. You can see early guns. As you uh, move along, you'll see 1903 Springfields, M1 Garands, and so forth. And that's generally the organization that you find here is that if you need something, it's pretty easy to locate, even though we have thousands of guns. <laughs>